Hello, my name is Sherry Harper and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at Penn State Altoona. Thanks so much for joining me today to learn a little bit more about Penn State. So I'll talk about the different campuses, I'll discuss academic programs, I can tell you how to get involved in student clubs and organizations, I'll go over the financial aid process, and I'll discuss the admissions application process, and hopefully provide you with a lot of helpful information as you continue through your college search process. Penn State is a world-class university, and we have a student-faculty ratio of 16 to 1. At many of the Penn State campuses, our average class size is 25 to 30. Faculty know the students, they call on them in class, and there's a lot of in-class interaction there. At every Penn State campus, our faculty are required to have office hours which they post, so students know when they're available in case there are questions. Now, as you're researching different colleges and universities, you may be looking at statistics, and among those, you may be reviewing the graduation and retention rates. At Penn State, we are proud to say that we are ranked among the highest in the nation for both of those rates. There are 20 campuses at the undergraduate level. So we're everywhere from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia, up to Erie and in between. And I think that's one of the great things about Penn State in that no matter what a student is looking for geographically within the state, they're probably going to find a Penn State campus nearby. Now, not only do we vary in geographic location, but we also vary in size. You may be aware that University Park in State College is our largest campus. There are some campuses outside of University Park that have three to 5,000 students. There are others that have one to 3,000 students and others that have fewer than 1,000 students. So whether you're looking for a small, a medium-sized, or a large university, you will find all of those opportunities at Penn State. Now, before I move away from the campus map here, I wanted to point out the different monopoly-sized houses next to some of our campuses. Those indicate the campuses that offer on-campus housing. University Park guarantees and requires first-year housing. Penn State Erie does the same within a certain mile radius to that campus. The rest of us that have on-campus housing do so on a first-come, first-served limited basis. I'll talk to you in more detail about housing a little bit later on in the presentation. Penn State has over 275 baccalaureate degrees from which to choose. So there are lots of options and they're broken down into different academic colleges. So for example, a few of those academic colleges include business and communications, engineering and science, among others. And we also have something that's known as the Division of Undergraduate Studies or DUS. So DUS is our exploratory or undecided area. So if you are sitting there and you're completely undecided as to what you want to major in, that's okay. I was actually that same student undecided in high school as to what I wanted to major in and it worked out just fine for me. Or if you're sitting there and you're trying to decide between two or three different majors, then you may want to consider the Division of Undergraduate Studies because you can come in undecided, work with an academic advisor, and figure it out from there. Some students will choose to be at one Penn State campus for the entirety of their academic career. Other students will look at what's known as the 2 plus 2 academic path. Now you may have heard of that term before, but if not, the two plus two academic path allows a student to start at one Penn State campus for their first and their sophomore years, and then transition to another Penn State campus for their junior and senior years. Really, it's your major choice that determines the campus of completion. University Park has the largest number of majors for completion, which makes sense because it is the largest campus. So a two plus two often means starting at a Commonwealth campus and finishing at University Park. But because I said it depends on your major choice, it could mean something like starting at Altoona and finishing at Harrisburg, or starting at Berks and finishing at Altoona. Now, most of our majors can be completed under the two plus two academic path. But as is the case with many things in life, there are exceptions to this. 
we have about eight or nine majors that we tell students they really need to look at starting and completing at University Park. A lot of those are in the College of Arts and Architecture. Also, for students who are interested in nursing, there are seven Penn State campuses that offer nursing and a student completes the degree at the campus of admission. In addition to in-class learning, students can also participate in engaged scholarship or out-of-class learning experiences. One of those opportunities is through undergraduate research. So when I was in college, I mistakenly thought that in order to do research, much like the picture you see here, a student needed to be in the sciences and I pictured someone in a lab with uh, a beaker and they were mixing solutions together. And it's true, at Penn State, you can be a biology major or a science major and you can participate in research, but you might be an English major or in engineering, or maybe you're a psychology student or a whole host of our other undergraduate majors and still participate in research. I know of some students at some of our campuses who have been afforded the opportunity to travel to conferences and present their work, and some have been published at the undergraduate level. So there are some great things happening with research at Penn State. We also have internships. Now there are some majors that will require internships as part of the curriculum, but even if they're not required, they're highly recommended because there is something to be said for the real world experience in addition to the in-class learning. Many of our campuses have internship coordinators with whom students can work. We also all have career services offices. So you can work with the staff in that office to begin to build a resume, to start learning how to write a cover letter, and to begin working on your interviewing skills. It's possible that some students will look for internships even the summer right after their first year in college. And so you want to be prepared for those. University Park has the largest career fair on the East Coast. Students from many Penn State campuses will attend and there have been a lot of great opportunities to talk to employers and have great conversations, many of which have led to interviews and then some of those turning into internships and employment opportunities. Every Penn State campus and each of our academic colleges also host their own career events. If you're interested in study abroad, we have over 300 study abroad opportunities within 54 different countries. Some of those are long term, so a student might be away for an entire semester and they could be taking courses while they're away and bringing that credit back to Penn State. Others, though, may be more short term and so there may not be time for taking courses if a student is participating over the summer or maybe through a spring break but those students could be doing community service and getting experiential learning. If you are interested in honors programs, each Penn State campus has its own honors program. There is also the Schreier Honors College through University Park. Students at many Penn State campuses can participate in the Schreier Honors College if they qualify. And if a student chooses to graduate from some of those campuses, it is possible then to graduate as a Schreier Honors Scholar. If you are interested in the Schreier Honors College, it is a separate application process from that of admission. So you will want to look online so that you know the timeline and all of the details for that application process. And you'll also find all of the benefits listed there as well. At Penn State, we foster and maintain a safe environment of respect and inclusion. And we do that in a number of different ways. Every Penn State campus has an equity and diversity office and the staff in that office work with their colleagues and our students to provide programming and discussions and awareness. One of the many examples I could give you of programming include uh, a lot of events that surround MLK week at Penn State Altoona each year. They have a celebration luncheon, uh, they bring in guest speakers, there are art performances and discussions and community service opportunities. So that's just one of many examples I could share. 
students can get involved in our clubs and organizations at each Penn State campus. So university-wide, there are over 1,200 opportunities, so lots of different options. And they'll vary by Penn State campus. So the best thing to do is to look at the campus that is of interest to you and go to their website for an up-to-date listing of all of those organizations. In general terms, we have student government and academic clubs, honor societies, music and theater and dance groups, students who plan and promote events through the Campus Activities Board. We have community service groups, diversity groups, religious clubs and organizations. We participate in THON. If you're not familiar with THON, it is the largest student-run philanthropic event of its kind. You're actually looking at a picture of it now. Students at Penn State raise money for children with pediatric cancer by participating in or fundraising for a 46 hour dance marathon. That occurs each year in February. One of the great things about college is that you get to explore different interests. So in addition to getting involved in clubs and organizations that may already exist, you may have interest in an area that may not exist but you can actually start your own club at your Penn State campus. You just need a few friends and the assistance of the student life office staff to help you in writing a constitution and finding you an advisor and then you and your friends can begin to organize that new club. And so that list online that I mentioned for each campus is ever changing because each year we do add new ideas. Let's spend some time talking about the application process. So at Penn State, there are three ways that you can apply. So we try to make it as easy as we possibly can for you. We are members of the coalition application and the common application. And then we have our own My Penn State application. Now, if you visit a Penn State campus outside of University Park before you apply, we can waive your application fee you would need to submit the Penn State application in order to receive that visit waiver. If you haven't already done so, what you would do is create a My Penn State profile. That'll give you a user ID and a password and allow you access to the application. So to do that, you would go to admissions.psu.edu and in the top right hand corner, you click on the login to My Penn State. That will then allow you to create your own profile. In addition to completing the online application, there are some other components that you need to consider for a completed application. One of those is the self-reported academic record or SRAR. So at this time in the process, students don't actually need to go to their school counselor and request an official transcript to be sent to Penn State. But rather, I would suggest that you go and request an unofficial copy of your high school transcript. You can then use that to complete your self-reported academic record. You want that information to be as accurate as possible because if you're admitted to Penn State and decide to attend, which I hope you would, then at that point, once a student has graduated from high school, the school counselor is going to send us a final official high school transcript that allows us to verify high school graduation and compare what was listed on the self-reported academic record. So that's why accuracy is important. Now for the seniors, uh, we have gone a test optional for summer and fall of 2021. So what that means is that students get to decide if they would like their standardized test scores to be used in the review of their Penn State application. There are some very helpful test optional frequently asked questions on the undergraduate admissions website if you want to take a look at those. So we want students to be looking at their academic record on the whole. So if a student has standardized test scores and they look at them and they feel that those standardized test scores support their academic success in high school, they may choose to submit them as part of the review. If, on the other hand, a student has scores and they look at them and they don't feel that they're a good representation of their high school success, they may choose not to submit them. So you will actually indicate to us on the application what your decision is. 
Now for any students who are looking beyond summer and fall of 2021, there has been no decision made at this time. However, once a decision is made, we will certainly notify you of that. Now for any students who are submitting standardized test scores, those scores should be official. So they should come directly from the testing center and we take the highest single test score or test date. Also, there are certain courses from high school that we review on your self-reported academic record for admission review. So if you'd like to review those, you can go to our undergraduate admission site to find all of that helpful information. And at any point, you're welcome to ask us as well. Now, you can use this information to estimate your eligibility. This is the middle 50% range for GPA and standardized test scores for both University Park and the Commonwealth campuses. Again, it's the middle 50%, so it's not a cutoff, but it gives an idea of a, for a student of where they may fall into that range. When you complete the application, you will have the opportunity to list your first choice campus, and then everyone will also list an alternate choice starting campus. We always review a student for their first choice campus initially. If they're eligible, we make that offer and stop there. If a student is not admissible to their first choice, then we go to the alternate choice campus review. For those students who are looking at University Park as their first choice, there is also a summer start option for University Park that you can consider. Now let's go over the timeline for admission. The application goes live each year, August 1st. And for seniors, the early action deadline has been moved from November 1st to November 15th. So you might be wondering what early action is. Well, early action is different from early decision. It is not binding in any way. It simply gives a student a decision from Penn State sooner or earlier than they would have received one in the past. So if a student is interested in early action, they want to have that completed application by November 15th for our seniors. And then they want to mark on their application that they would like to be considered for that. If they do those things, they will have a decision of some sort from the university by December 24th. Now for campuses outside of University Park, we are on a rolling admissions basis. So when we start decisions here in the fall, we'll continue to do so as we get completed applications in. Now, if you don't make the early action deadline or you weren't as concerned about early action, but you still want to apply to Penn State, then you wanna have a completed application into us by December 1st. Also, any students interested in nursing should plan to have a completed application by December 1st as well. If you are interested in completing the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, you'll want to uh, have that into us by December 1st for maximum consideration. And it is available October 1st each year. That will open students up for review for any types of federal loans and grants to which they're eligible. There's a question on there about work study. So work study is a student job on campus that is attached to financial information. If a student qualifies for work study, there are a number of those positions in administrative offices and other areas at each Penn State campus. If a student does not qualify for work study, but they would like to have an on-campus job, there are also some wage payroll positions such as in each campus cafeteria. Also, once you have a FAFSA on file, we automatically start reviewing for scholarships. Some require the FAFSA, others may not. There are some academic colleges within the university that have their own separate applications for scholarships. So it's an always, always a good idea to look online for that information. And we're happy to put you in touch with our student aid staff at any campus at any point as well. Here you'll see the cost information for 2020-2021 for a Pennsylvania resident for estimated purposes. This lists both University Park and the Commonwealth campuses. So you'll see that there is a cost differential between the different campuses. 
One of the other tools that is online that I always like to bring your attention to is a tuition calculator. And that is available at tuition.psu.edu. So if you wanna look in a little bit more detail, I would encourage you to take a look at that site. Penn State is well known. I will tell you that anytime I am wearing Penn State attire and I go out, I hear the we are chant. Uh, and I know that I meet alumni most places that I go. We have the largest alumni network of its kind. I have been in a restaurant in Colorado. I have been in the middle of the San Diego Zoo, and I've been on a shore excursion for a Caribbean cruise, and I have met Penn State alumni. So there is something to be said for that network and that Penn State family. Once a Penn Stater, always a Penn Stater. And that includes career services as well. So if 10 years down the road, a student just has graduated and they decide now that they want to change career paths, they can actually go back to career services and they can get assistance with such things as the resume and the cover letter. Now, for those who might be interested specifically in Penn State Altoona, I did want to provide you with some additional information. We are one of the larger Penn State campuses outside of University Park. So we have about 3,100 students and we're 45 miles from the University Park campus. We offer 23 baccalaureate degrees that can be completed at our campus. They range from everything like accounting and business to cybersecurity analytics and operations and security risk analysis to uh, electromechanical engineering technology and rail transportation engineering to the liberal arts and nursing and education and the sciences and beyond. You can see a complete listing of those on our website and you can find the majors specific to other Penn State campuses either on that campus website or all are listed on the undergraduate admissions site too. Each Penn State campus has its own varsity athletic programs. Altoonas are listed there for you. University Park is NCAA Division I, Altoona and a few others are NCAA Division III, and others are part of their own conferences. We also offer club and intramural sports at the different Penn State campuses as well. So lots of ways to get involved. I mentioned earlier that I would talk more about housing. So Penn State Altoona is one of the campuses that offers on-campus housing. We have four residence halls, two are traditional and two are suite style. We can accommodate 901 of our 3,100 or so students in those spaces and 650 of the spaces go to incoming first year students. So if you are interested in a campus that has on-campus housing, I would encourage you to have a conversation so that you know about housing. Uh, and for most of us, what happens is that when on-campus housing fills, we start an on-campus housing wait list. Many of us also offer off-campus housing. So on-campus housing is university owned and operated. Off-campus housing is privately owned and operated. So it could be a large apartment complex or a smaller apartment or a house for rent. And a lot of those off-campus are truly within walking distance to the campuses. Here you'll see the rest of our admissions team. We are here to assist you at any point and answer all of your questions. My email address is there, so don't hesitate to contact me at any point. Every Penn State campus has a great admissions team. So if there's one that you're interested in, don't hesitate to contact them as well. Uh, but I can answer questions for you about any of the Penn State campuses too. Uh, and consider attending one of our upcoming events at one of our campuses. Right now, all of those events are virtual. When we are able to welcome families back to our campuses, we certainly will do so, and we will notify you when that time comes. But in the interim, don't hesitate to contact us to schedule one of the virtual visits. We also offer uh, virtual one-on-one -on -one appointments. So if you would prefer to talk to one of us uh, about individualized questions, you can schedule a time for you and your family to meet with us as well. 
This is our social media information for Penn State Altoona. Many of the campuses have these as well. So you can follow us to get important event information and timelines and just helpful tips along the way. Thank you so much for your time today. I really hope that you were able to, uh, to learn a little bit more about Penn State. And again, don't hesitate to contact me with any questions. Take care.